Good morning, conference, and welcome back for the literature panel section of Saturday of Sunday morning. Yes, one day I will actually get all the words in the right order, but today is not that day. Today we've got with us, we've got Jack Sheffield, who is an absolutely amazing author of the Teacher series of books. And we have Carol Matthews, who has been an absolute heroine of mine since I first started reading her back in the 90s. Oh, yay. Welcome both of them and good morning, you two. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> See, get it wrong again. <laughs> right, 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 right time. That as we mean to go on. <laughs> <laughs> right, hi, I'm I'm Sin. I'm the chair of the Creative Writing Society Write Club, and we asked our members to put a series of questions to you. So these are to both of you to start with, if that's okay. It is indeed. <coughs> my that's first fun. question. Brilliant. My first, sorry, I talk over people. I'll try really hard not to do that, but you know. My first question is, do you start your novels at the start and work through, or do you begin with an end in mind and have to work out how to get there? Who wants to go oh. first? Do you want to go, Carol? No, uh, you go first, Jack. Uh, I okay. sit down with my editor and uh, in late November and just have a little chat with her about what's coming up next. And because my teacher series goes from one academic year to the next uh, we often uh, end with a, a cliffhanger uh, or as a lady from Barnsley said a coat hanger um, <laughs> at one point so um, I have a, a reasonable idea where it will go but uh, as I'm sure Carol will um, go along with me uh, it, it emerges as you go along and the characters develop as you, as you work your way through the books. So I'll, I'll pause there. So I, the answer to your question is, yes, I do have an idea of the ending. Thank you. Carol? Well, I've been doing um, two books a year since for probably 10 or 12 years now. I, I first published in 1997, but in the, in the latter part of my career, I've been doing two, two books a year. So as you can imagine, the, dad, the deadline's very tight. I do a book every six months. So um, I plot meticulously. I spend about two weeks um, doing my plot, getting to my characters. And um, because of um, deadline pressure, I can't wander about too much. So I have to have a very definite idea of where I'm going. Um, I, kind of, I always think it's like setting out on a journey. You wouldn't really set off without a map, um, particularly if you want to get there in a rush. <laughs> So um, I do have a, a, a very strict um, plot, but um, there are moments, and um, I love them, when your characters wake you up at three o'clock in the morning, you think, well, I had no idea you were going to do that. And we have a little reshuffle. But on the whole, um, I kind of stick to a, a plot and I most definitely know what's happening in, in each chapter. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. Next, we want to know where you get your inspiration from. And when it comes, how do you transfer that onto paper? Well, I kick off Carol again. Yeah, go on. Yeah, fine. Um, well, uh, for those of you out there that don't know me, uh, my world is primary school teaching. I was a primary school head teacher a long time ago. Um, I finished up as a university lecturer before that head of a large school. But the happiest time in my career was when I was a primary school head teacher of a small village school. So I decided uh, while I was there to write lots of short stories. I wrote about 50 short stories about the happy times and the more poignant times in my teaching career. Then I put them in a box, forgot all about them. And when I retired at the age of 60, I thought I'll write a first novel. So I wrote this, Teacher Teacher, and uh, took it to the uh, at Winchester Writers Conference. I was picked up by a literary agent there uh, and he sent it to six mainstream publishers and they all wanted it, went to an auction, sold well and I was asked to write a series but the inspiration comes from the people I meet, people I talk to and lots of memories and I've got dozens of notebooks, I always carry a notebook, lots of old notebooks, lots of stories so that was my starting point. I'll pause there. Thank you. You'll be very restra restrained, Jack. <laughs> I'm loving it. Um, I wrote a romantic book. comedy novel, so um, my inspiration can come from all over the place. And um, I've managed to convince my accountant that afternoon tea is a, a, a perfect place to do research. 
because a lot of it is stories that people tell me and my books are light and funny but quite often they have like a little serious issue with a teeny tiny eye at the heart of them and um one or two of them have been um based in truth um i have um a friend called christine and um i've known her for years we met when she won a writing course that um, i had run and um she sat down we went out one evening she sat down with a bottle of wine and she told me her story um and I, it was just a book and i woke up the next morning and contacted her and said can i write this and she said but how are you going to make it funny and i said well we'll do it chapter by chapter and see if you're happy with it so sometimes it's it literally is quite close to real life and other times um like my chocolate lovers series it's entirely um uh, out of uh, my imagination but it is from I think once you're, you're writing, particularly commercially, you kind of pick up things from telly, from magazines, from, uh, you know, conversations, stuff like that that's around you at the time. So thankfully, um, inspiration can strike kind of from anywhere, really. Um, so that's kind of where where I go from. And I'm, having done, again, 33 books, um, my editors give me pretty much free reign of what I do, really. Um, so kind of always thinking about the next book while I'm writing the one that I'm doing. Yeah. And I just pick up on a thing that you literally just said, because that feeds into another question that somebody put up where you said that you're you're pretty much given free reign. Um, because we actually got a question through that said, do you ever worry about inadvertently causing offence through humour? Or are you at the stage now where you're pretty sure that you know what's acceptable to your readership? Um, do you want me to answer that, Carol? Um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of humour in, in my book, particularly children's humour. I am cautious, I'm sensitive about other people's uh, feelings and uh, I try and write sensitively. So there is uh, a great deal of humour, a lot of malapropisms, an eclectic group of village characters that I know and love and if they walked in that door I'd, I'd recognise them now. So. Um, uh, yes, I am. I am cautious. What about you, Carol? Um, I think because I mean, my last two um, books, uh, particularly the Happiness for Beginners, which was out last year, and I'm just writing the sequel, which is going to be Christmas for Beginners, which will be out in October. So that was a really tight turnaround. Um, but they're based on a farm, a real life farm um, that um, is a educational facility for children with uh, autism, special needs, um, mental health issues. So with something like that, what I do is when I finish the book, I will give it, I've given it to the farm who've been really, really helpful in the book. Um, it's called Hope Farm and in real life it's a place called Animal Antics. So I give the book to the farm and two of the people there have read it. So they're completely happy with what I've written about them. And also sometimes if you have, um, not so much in my books, and I don't know about yours, Jack, but um, they have, I can't, I can't remember the, the proper term, it's called something like a sensitivity reader. Reader, yeah. And they will send it to a person who is a specialist in that area and will check that everything's okay. And I think even, you know, I, I started out in 1997 and what was acceptable as humour or right. comics then is mm -hmm. not now. And um, so I think we are kind of all hopefully a little bit um, more aware um, now of, of, of other people's issues and how to phrase things correctly. But we're humans, you know, that books are produced by humans, uh, edited by humans, thank God. And um, there are going to be mistakes. That's kind of life, isn't it, really? Can't, can't edit it all out. It's a Brilliant. good question, Sin. It's a good question because yeah. I, I can, thinking back, first book, my editor sent it off to whatever the term is that Carol was trying to find out. Sensitivity reader. Is it a sensitive uh, reader? Yeah. Uh, but they were also concerned about libel as well, because mm -hmm. uh, I'd got a real villain, uh, a local farmer who was uh, a nasty piece of work, and they wanted to know if it really existed. And of course, that wasn't the case. Uh, I, it was a, a fictional character. So, um, yeah. Brilliant. And off the back of that, because you write about your world and the, the world that you you moved in, has anybody that you've worked with recognised themselves in your books? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I asked their permission first. I work with a wonderful 
uh, lady deputy head teacher and I said to her uh, I want to create a fictional uh, deputy head in my book uh, who was a great infant teacher just like you uh, can I uh, base her on you and she said um, yes Jack except for one thing I said what's that she said could she always be in her 40s <laughs> now that was my first book <laughs> And each book goes through an academic year. So when I got to about book five or book six, I had to ring her up and say, look, I'm sorry, but you're 51 now. <laughs> um, whatever the question was, I hope I've answered it. Go on, Carol. You have, very much so. Thank you. Carol, do you have anyone that's recognised themselves in your work? Um, yes, my mother, I write very good mad mothers and my mother thinks that she's every single mad mother that is in my book. Um, <laughs> But a bit like Jack, if I'm going to use somebody's job or um, yeah. kind of a kernel of their story, then I will always check, I, again, particularly with um, um, some of the ones I've written, you have to get an agreement that that person is happy with you doing that. Um, I've got a poet who's put uh, some poetry in um, my last couple of books, I have to have an agreement that we can use those. It is you have to be so much more careful of things like that now um touch wood i've never had an issue because i've always cleared it um with with everyone first but yeah, you can't kind of just go and write about random people now and then uh, assume that they're going to be okay with it excellent thank you so much Sin, right. can i just add a very quick one to that yeah because of course you yesterday can. i was thank on you. the phone <coughs> excuse me to uh, a policeman a, a retired policeman because my books are set 40 years ago and he was a copper back then. And there's an arrest in the book I'm writing, which is number 14. So you can see Carol writes twice as fast as I do. <laughs> um, and I wanted to check an arrest procedure with him and the sort of motorbike he had there and the uniform he had. Um, so I was on the phone yesterday to this guy to get the facts uh, correct. Just added that. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's, that's brilliant because it really helps to have access to people that, that did the thing or are doing the thing to make that's sure right. that you've got it as right as you can. I think you need to because if you don't, somebody will write to you and say it wasn't done like that in, you know, whatever. I had a funny one the other day, sorry, digressing slightly, but um, so my first book was 1997 and somebody wrote to me and just said, well, why did you not just pick up and, they, you know, ring this guy on a mobile phone it's like yeah we didn't have them then <laughs> no. no it wasn't quite like that was it <laughs> right this is this is this is a bigger question so if you don't mind um if you had the chance to write in a different genre what would it be and why and what possible pen name would you use for that and i say it's a bigger question because i know that you do write in slightly different genres and there are pen names involved in some cases so you know can you tell us a bit about why you choose what you choose what you would love to do if you had the opportunity and what's the maddest pen name that you would love to write under <laughs> who wants to go go on carol oh, oh go on darling i'm quite happy with you because it works all right. right. Um, well, I, I, in my spare time, because I've got just that little bit more than Carol with two books a year. <laughs> I, um, and by the way, it takes me about a thousand hours to write a book. I, I allocate 24 weeks uh, at the beginning of January, working weeks, and write about 5,000 each week. And I, I finish up and cut it down and do a review at the end. Uh, but in what spare time I've got, I've loved the idea of time travel. I love that. And uh, I'm writing um, a novel, a teenage novel called Time School. So I've got some uh, young teenagers who somehow go through a snickle way in York and finish up in 1984 and save York when the big fire uh, oh. burned down York Minster. And of course, I saw it the next morning. I, I was there and I can remember in the paper it said uh, two o'clock in the morning some unknown teenagers had rung the fire department and uh, had saved York Minster and the surrounding building and it just struck me as a good idea so uh, I would write um, teenage novels because uh, I'd be interested in that and uh, my new pen name would be Carol Matthews <laughs> Go on, Carol. <laughs> I'll let you have it just for a small fee. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I like a bit of vamp 
vampire action. Um, oh, no. I do, I'm so sorry. Uh -huh. and, uh, years ago, I'd written um, uh, uh, about 75,000 words of a quite saucy, it was more True Blood than Twilight um, vampire novel. And I sent it to my agent and she went, darling, no one's interested in vampires. And it was about two years before oh, Twilight yeah. came out. <laughs> Missed out. I, I, I used to remind her of that when I'd had a glass or two. Um, but I do, I like a vampire novel, but I've written, uh, so I've written three quarters of a vampire novel and I've written three quarters of a very gritty crime novel just to see if I could do it. And I didn't enjoy it at all. Um, I end my day generally in, you know, kind of a light, fluffy place. Um, I have a, if not a happy ever after ending, then um, a kind of satisfactory resolution um, that's usually pleasant to my books. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to have my day. Um, I got to a point where I needed somebody tortured in this crime novel and I didn't want to do it. I just didn't want to write it. Mm. And um, so I'm kind of really happy with uh, where I write. Um, I've got a ghost story burning in my heart that I'd like to write at some point, but um, I I'm really happy um, writing uh, women's fiction and romantic comedy. That's my natural voice as kind of as a person and as a writer I think um, and um, I'm, funny enough I was in talking about it the other day because again somebody had um, uh, written to me and said is Carol Matthews your real name um, and I was thinking why would you pick a pen name that's Carol Matthews <laughs> so yes that is is my real name and um, if I was going to choose a name it would be something very glamorous like um, I kind of think I might like to be Blaise Champagne or something like that I love it I love it <laughs> and I really want to read that novel of that Jack with the young adult and the time travel and, and burning down York Minster it sounds amazing right both of you <laughs> what part of the writing process do you find the hardest? Is it the writing, the editing, the searching for agents and publishers? And have you got any tips at all for overcoming the hurdles that you think exist? Well, there's plenty. I can give a few tips to start with and Carol can fill in, uh, uh, fill in the gaps. Uh, I think you write about what you know about. Uh, I always carry a notebook. Um, You've got to learn to accept and deal with rejection because a lot of publishers, you know, will say no. Getting a, an agent is good. Uh, keep writing, never stop. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a smashing book called the Writers and Artists Yearbook, and that's a guide for authors, illustrators, writers of fiction, poets, playwrights, uh, TV, radio, newspapers, magazines. It's also got a list of agents. Getting an agent is is a, a real plus. First part of your question was, uh, are there any problems? Uh, not specially. To be honest, I find the end bit a little bit tedious when you've got to go through the PDF and you've got justified text in front of you and you're reading through a novel that you wrote a year ago and you're looking for little errors. And I just have this theory when you've got a, a chain of people, you know, that you only need somebody to add an error and you we've all spotted errors in books which irritate me because i like i take a pride in handing in uh, you know a decent uh, manuscript uh, uh, each year um and uh, like carol as she mentioned earlier i'm i'm very disciplined uh, and i try and involve conflict and dialogue conflict what stops the main character achieving their goal dialogue i always read it out loud and uh, enjoy doing that. Dialogue moves the, the plot forward. And um, I suppose one of the hard bits is removing, you know, I've finished up with 100,000 words and I've got to reduce it to 80. So it looks, it looks something like this. So I, I'm asked to write, I think, shorter books than Carol. Mine are about 340 pages um, and it's 80,000 words. So that's what I'm asked uh, to do and just getting it like that and then there comes a point when you've got to say that's it and particularly in carol's case move on to the next one i'll pause there i want you to be my teacher i swear to god you just you, the teacher in you came you, out about putting in the you, manuscript you can tell I, can it's say, amazing. I, I absolutely loved it i missed teaching when i moved on you know to yeah. so-called bigger things go on carol thank you thank carol 
if you can ever get to one of Jack's readings, do because the way that you read out your books is fantastic. The way you bring them to life, and even reading them on the page, your voice is absolutely there. Um, remind me of the question, Tim. What was the whole question thing? Was what part of the writing process do you find hardest, and do you have any tips to overcome those hurdles? Okay. Um, I think the hardest thing now is um, distractions and. Um, Again, when I started 20 odd years ago, um, all the author had to do was write the book. And um, uh, a bit like not having mobile phones, email had only just kind of come onto our horizon. And my editor didn't believe in email. She didn't think it was gonna catch on. So we used to write each other lovely long letters. And they used to send me um, 25 found letters when um, they got to that kind of number in the post. Now, um, social media, which is fantastic. I love it. Um, I talk to my readers every day um, on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram when I remember. Um, and that's fantastic. They tell direct feedback about how they've enjoyed your book or what they've not enjoyed or all kinds. I get on average 500 messages a day. And um, while that's a great thing, you've then got to answer those. And if you don't answer them, people get very edgy about if you haven't answered within a day or so. So a large part of my day now is um, responding to social media. And um, I like to do it myself because I feel if somebody's taking time to write to you, then um, it's only polite that it, you're the person that answers. I know not especially among authors, but I know that a lot of celebrities have a team of people doing their social media. But on the whole, authors um, do it ourselves. And that eats into your working day in, um, a, in a, an enormous rate. I think I've got something like 75,000, 80,000 followers across social media. And that takes a lot of feeding. They're not just happy if you put a tweet up saying my book's out this week. You People want to be involved in your lives now as an author. And that is the biggest hurdle I find now. Because I like it, I'm quite happy on there. Um, and sometimes even my readers message me and say, Matthew, just get off social media and write the book. Um, so it is managing your time. And I, I think the other thing that when I do talks or writing groups, things like that, people are looking for a shortcut uh, to get a book finished. And at some point, you have to sit your body on the chair long enough to write. Um, my books are 100 to about 120,000 words. I'm trying to keep them to 100. Um, you've just got to sit on your chair long enough to produce that amount of work. There's no shortcuts. And people kind of want to um, send them to out to agents after three chapters before they've developed the book. And a book at the start is not generally and um, where it in what it is in the finished package so i think people now are in too much of a rush and the discipline is to put the hours in and that's that's kind of what i've learned to do but it's probably the biggest struggle i think deadlines yeah. are, deadlines are a good thing we talked about that uh, before we, we did but <laughs> deadlines definitely keep you motivated they really really do and that's all really really useful information i've really loved talking to you too can I ask a specific question to Jack now, please? Go on, one, of our, one of our members, Colin, absolutely amazing guy, said a thing to ask you, but you've pretty much already covered it. So I'm going to say it anyway, but then I'm going to ask you a second question. He said, had you written much before your first novel or did you just strike gold at 62? Um, <laughs> yeah, I struck gold at 61, but that's not, <laughs> you know, be reasonable. Um, <laughs> I started writing short stories when I was eight years old. I've written short stories all my life and absolutely love it. So reading and writing are my two uh, main hobbies. But I did write for magazines and newspapers before that. And in a way that honed my writing skills. I'd be interested to hear if Carol went through a, a similar sort of journey, but I did a lot of that beforehand, but striking gold for me, if you like, was going with the manuscript of Teacher Teacher to the Winchester Writers Conference 
and meeting a London-based literary agent, Phil Patterson of Marjan Scripps, who's been fantastic. And he said, I like the book, I want to be your agent. That made such a difference. So that for me was, if you like, uh, striking gold. And now I've got a second career, uh, which I didn't expect, and I'm enjoying it. And I'm one of those self-isolating 70 plus year olds, of course, and uh, just uh, getting, on with my, getting on with my writing and the hope it continues. Over to you, Carol. Brilliant, thank you. Carol, can I ask you a slightly different question, yeah. which is you write both TV and film scripts as well as your novels. Which medium do you prefer and why? Um, definitely novels. Um, I enjoy dabbling with the um, uh, film and the TV over the years. Very nearly got a series on the BBC. And that's kind of the difficulty with TV and film. You can do an awful lot of work. Um, and it for you know not a lot of return financially and it's so rare that it hits the screens um, so uh, the decision behind doing two novels a year to be honest was um, I write very fast um, and I was spending kind of half of my year doing films and tv and various other bits and pieces that were then you would never see the end product and it was very frustrating whereas with a novel you're in total control, you're, uh, you know, you set the pace um, with your publisher um, and you know that after a year or uh, a certain amount of time, there is going to be a product on the shelves. And I write because I want people to read it. Um, I don't kind of want to write into a vacuum. And um, so uh, to me, uh, the novel is, uh, you know, the, the perfect thing. And a bit like Jack, where he was saying from the, the age of eight, he was writing. I didn't start writing that young, but I was always an avid reader. Um, mm. I, I was an only child and my, you know, my, I was never happier than when I had my head in a book and was like that all of my life. Um, so that, that's where kind of my uh, thing came from. And it was only at the start of um, the big chick lit um, boom that I read a book because I kind of was brought up on like Jackie Collins and Sidney Sheldon and all of the big bonk busters. That was my teen reading. And it was only when Chick Lit came along uh, and I read a book that was based in Hemel Hempstead that I actually thought that I might have something to say because I'm kind of, uh, again, from my accent, I'm a kind of working class um, a girl from near Liverpool. And uh, I didn't think that I, you know, I didn't know anything about yachts and glittering parties. And it was only when that came along that I felt that there would be an outlet for my work. So yes, thank you, Bridget Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Now, can I ask both of you the, the, the pertinent question, which is the one that comes up whenever people write, what did you buy with your first publishing check? <laughs> uh, good question. Am I answering now? Yes, yeah. please. Um, I think, I bought, I think it was this chair. I think that that was one of the things and this desk, in other words, a comfortable environment uh, in my study where I could carry on uh, writing. But uh, usually my wife decides, uh, uh, decides that. Uh, so I won't call her in to answer this question, but uh, um, I think, uh, and I think we had a holiday. I think we had a holiday, yes. Oh, I did have a holiday. I remember, believe it or not, I was on the beach in Lanzarote and I got a call from my editor saying, can you write a Christmas, a short Christmas book that we're going to sell for a five and just put on the counter? So I wrote an angel called Harold, a little hardback wow. book. And uh, so holiday, office furniture, a little bit boring. And that's about it. Excellent. Carol? Well, I got my break in publishing through um, having a short story, winning the short story competition. It was a competition in a writing magazine uh, for the annual love story. And I won a check for a thousand pounds. And I thought, oh, this can't be hard. <laughs> First short story, thousand pounds, off, off we go. And I did the most sensible thing I've ever done in my life. Instead of um, spending the money on shoes and handbags and, and cases of Prosecco, I spent it on a writing course and I went over to a place called Penn Farm Arts in uh, Norfolk 
and um, on the course, um, I'd started my book, my first book, which was um, uh, called Let's Meet on Platform 8. And the deal was we worked during the day and then read it out in the evening. And the tutor took me to one side and said, this is good enough to send to an agent and here's the name. And um, so um, the first the first money I got from anything being published was um, a great key to my future. <laughs> I didn't really imagine that I'd still be here 20 odd years later um, doing it. Um, so Absolutely yeah. wonderful. I'm, I'm so happy. I remember Let's Meet on Platform 8. That was, that was my first of your books and then I just dived headfirst in every time they came out. So It's been such an absolute honour talking to the both of you. It's been absolutely stupendous. I would just like you to both give a few final words to our, our delegates at conference this morning to send them on the way and say thank you both of you for being here it's been absolutely amazing thank you for having us it's been lovely and yes thank you keep safe everybody out there and uh, enjoy writing and happy reading <laughs>